All right, everybody, welcome back here as we continue our Metallica album review series. We left off with Load uh, in 1996. Now we're already hopping into just the next year in 1997 with Reload. And pretty much what was supposed to happen was the stuff from this was going to be also included on Load as a whole double album. But... Um, you know, I guess, I mean, that would have been one bulky album because I'm telling you, Lowe was already pretty, a pretty lengthy record, but, um, and this one's about, you know, an hour or two. So we would have been talking like a two hour record. It's like, what in the world? Um, but I guess that was originally the plan there. And much like, uh, the album cover for load, um, with, you know, blood and semen, Instead of that, this this you have blood in it, but this time it's the artist's piss. So there's that. <laughs> Again, does it look cool? I like lava or the sun or something. Yeah, but what the hell, you know? <laughs> but um, it pretty much uh, you know, same production. Obviously, the same lineup on this thing. Very um, a lot of the same songwriting um kind of themes that we'll see on this thing here but does that mean it's as good Let, let's go ahead and find that out because we kick it off with the first track fuel and already i'm like dude that's i, I don't really like this one it's uh I, I just think it's kind of corny sounding to me um and just the way it almost seems like they're they're trying too hard or something i don't i don't know i just i've never liked this song really you know it, it it's just kind of i don't know and, and it's not that because it almost kind of has that kind of i mean it is a faster one kind of a thrashier tune right but it it, it just doesn't do it for me it, it almost seems forced like oh let's go ahead and you know give them a treat here and try try doing this um again even though that's clearly not where they were you know, add at that time with, you know, most of the songwriting on both this album and Load. So it just, it didn't really fit. It, the song, I, it's just not that good to me. I mean, it's okay. Um, I mean, I'll say Kirk Hammett's solo on it was pretty sick, but I, I mean, I, I just don't like it. it. It's not one that I'm going to be like, oh, I'm pissed. This thing is getting turned off immediately. But I mean, it's not one I ever really care to venture out to hear. If I don't have to. Then we go on over to the second track. The Memory Remains. And listen here. So here's my kind of experience with this one. I've always thought this was a pretty cool one, right? I mean, it was um, it was even featured in like a, a little promo for a, at WrestleMania 28. Triple H, The Undertaker. I always thought that was pretty cool. They included this song in there. And I kind of remembered it for that. And it's got a cool, you know, riff, verse, even chorus. Where I draw the line is when they get that, um, some old lady singer, I, I forget who it is, but she's over here sounding like crazy frog singing at the end of this. And I just, uh, and I forgot entirely about that. And then that happened and I just started cracking up, you know, I'm like, what in the freaking world is this? That just straight up ruined it for me and makes this thing, I mean, I'll, I'll, it'll be hard for me not to laugh at that, at this song because of that. Um, otherwise take that old chunk out we've got a pretty damn decent song here, but that just straight up ruined it and it caught me off guard. I mean, like I said, I totally forgot that that happened in the song. So it was, it, it threw me for a loop. Then we go on to devil's dance and it's, it's another kind of weird one, you know, uh, it's got kind of just that weird kind of James Hetfield, like, Ooh, you know, kind of thing. And I, I don't know. I, I don't really, I, that's another one. I'm not really, uh, digging. Um, it's okay. I guess it's got kind of a cool riff and everything, but, and, and see already we're, we're three tracks in and it's so crazy because, you know, if you watch last time, I really like load. I love load. I think it was an awesome album. Um, and with this having this similar themes to it and everything, you think I would really be digging this one, but we're three tracks in and it's not going too hot. So then we go to track number four, The Unforgiven Two. And this is one of the better ones, uh, I think, off here. I mean, 
do we really need a sequel or two sequels? Because we'll get Unforgiven 3 later on down the line. Do we, do we really need those sequels to that song? Maybe not. But, I mean, they did it, and it's pretty cool. I like the uh, the chorus is pretty cool, and it kind of does. It sounds like a sequel to Unforgiven. So, you know, it's not like it sounds like something entirely different. Um, it has kind of some similar elements to it there. And, you know, for that, it kind of makes it, I mean, it makes it a pretty, pretty solid song. Um, one of the better ones off here, uh, I think. Then we go to Better Than You. And it, we're kind of back to mediocrity um, with this one. Nothing, you know, I mean, it, this one definitely is just kind of basic. Uh, pretty much a filler track for me. Um and it's like, not not that there's much to be filling because you know we're this is what five tracks in now and we're just it's really rocky start here and better than you doesn't help this case I don't think it's really a good song I I don't think it's terrible but it's like you know okay same with Slither coming up here another just totally just forgettable one um that is kind of a filler track um and. There's, there's really not much else to be said about it. It's one of those, uh, this, we're going to see this a couple times here, you know, um, even on these next couple of tracks. I mean, but really this next one, I actually, this is one of my favorite ones off here. It does kind of keep that kind of Southern kind of bluesy feel that Lode had and actually did it well um, with Carpe Diem Baby. Is it a little, uh, is it a little corny? Maybe a little bit, but um I love the riff in this one. This this one's definitely one of the better ones off here, like a hundred percent. I like. I think the way the chorus kind of flows and everything. I think it fits well. Um, but th this is one I could definitely see being on load and fitting in and like not being considered maybe a filler track on load. Like it being like okay, that's a like I remember. Not it wouldn't be one of the best ones off load by any means. But it's one that I could see fitting in just fine in there. Um, so Car Carpe Diem Baby, is, that's a solid one for me. That's one of my favorites off here. Then we go with Bad Seed. And that one's okay, too. Um, kind of following Carpe Diem Baby kind of has that bluesy, more, uh, you know, southern kind of approach to that, that load on, at, at moments leaned heavily into. So, I mean, it, it, and it's okay. Um, it's not my favorite by any means off here, but it's one that is definitely quite a bit better than, like, the last couple uh, of, like, the, those first, you know, four or five tracks there. Um, then we go with Where the Wild Things Are, and this one's different sounding. Um, I do like this one. This is another one of the better ones off here. Um, I don't love it. But, I mean, it's got a hooky uh, chorus to it and everything. A lot of kind of crazy, um, well, I wouldn't say a lot, but there were kind of a crazy, you know, time time shift, time change there, um, right, the pre-chorus to the chorus. It kind of, the only, I mean, I do, I, I like this one because it does have some good hooks and stuff, and I like the riff in it. Um, but it does kind of sound like, instead of being like a smooth transition with these time changes, kind of jarring and not really in a good way. Um, so it almost sounds like three songs kind of mesh together. Um, if that makes any sense. But it's not, you know, I, I can jam to it and have a pretty good time with it. So, and, it, and it's one of the better ones off here. Um, then we go on to Prince Charming. And we're back to that kind of mediocrity again that we got with Slither and Better Than You, you know, and Fuel. I, I mean, it, it's... We're, we're right back to that here. So, I mean, it's like there's been a couple of kind of hit and then there's been some total misses. And this is one of those just total misses for me that, you know, again, gets grouped along with those kind of better than you and fuel and slither. They just kind of went way over my head. I'm like, you know, this is just forgettable filler that I can see why it wasn't included unload and the overall i can see why this wasn't a package deal together thankfully but then we go on to low man's lyric and this is kind of a lengthier one that kind of takes uh 
kind of goes towards more like the mama said kind of, you know, um, vibe that on load, you know, with the kind of acoustic ballad, country sounding ballad, which if, you know, if you saw last time, I don't really like, I'm not really a country music fan at all, but I kind of like mama said for whatever reason, right? This one, I can't really say the same. I mean, it's, it just doesn't really get anywhere for me. Um, it just kind of drags on. I don't think it needed to be an eight, you know, seven, eight minute track or whatever. Um, and I, I mean, it's not, it's not ter like terrible, terrible, but it doesn't really do anything for me. Um, it just, again, it just kind of drags on and it's, it's, so it's not necessarily the kind of approach of that almost Southern kind of country, um, approach th that mama said had, cause I do like that one. And that's not really the problem I'm having with it. It's just that it doesn't really get anywhere. It doesn't really hook me in, you know? So then that second last track is Attitude. That's one of the best ones off here. I totally forgot about this track. And that one is another one, like along with Carpe Diem Baby, that could totally, I, I could see fitting in just fine on load. You know, it's got a hooky chorus, a really cool kind of bluesy riff and everything. So I, I think that's a solid one. Um, no problems with Attitude there. One of the better, probably my top three off here. But you want to talk about the number one off here, it's got to be that last track, Fixer. That one is, it's much like, um, you know, uh, the Outlaw Torn. It's kind of a big, long, kind of epic to close out the album. Not like a in a progressive way, as you know, you would get like on Injustice, you know, Master of Puppets kind of way as an epic, right? It's just, it's like a good build um, of just solid solo, solid riff. I love the chorus. This is my favorite track off here, hands down. It's one that I, that, you know, and I, and I totally forgot kind of what that one went back to. I've not really revisited this album a lot because obviously I'm not a fan. Um, but that one is one that I'm like, okay, Fixer's pretty damn good. And that would fit, that kind of blows away all this stuff on here, um, for me at least. And I think that, um, but that being said, even that isn't, it, Fixer being the best song off here wouldn't really be anywhere near my favorite songs off Load. And and I know it, it sounds crazy because it's like, look, they, they're even packaged kind of the same, Load, Reload, and recorded probably, I think, during the same sessions because they were going to make it on one double album. But they're just like, this one is such, this is like they grabbed all the filler and threw it on here. And it's just, an, it's an uninteresting album to me. And it's, and then you got the joke thing, you know, <laughs> with the memory remains. It's like a joke listening to that, with that ending, um, with the crazy frog sounding, you know, voice of that old lady singer. Weird, weird stuff. Weird choices and fuel. I just, I really can't. Man, that is just one of my least favorite songs by Metallica ever. Um, so this this is not a good album. Uh, I I don't think it's good. Have I heard way worse um, stuff out there from other bands and stuff before that are way more sinful to their respective discographies? Yes. But that doesn't mean this isn't, you know, bad. Because it's pretty bad. And and that's what's... You know, I, that that's why whenever I was going to revisit this, I'm like, you know, maybe I'm, you know... It'll be good to get a fresh listen to it. Because I do... I've, I've always really liked Load. But even like the first time I ever heard this, I was like, that's kind of lame, you know? Um, so I was like, maybe, maybe going back to it, especially right after load, I'll appreciate it more. No, I kind of landed right kind of how I've originally thought about it the first time I ever heard this, which is just not liking it and not wanting to visit it very often at all. And only really liking, you know, Carpe Diem Baby, um, Fixer, Where the Wild Things Are, you know, the Unforgiven 2 is pretty good, Attitude, and, you know, the rest of them, you know, I'm just like, they're like throwaway for me, you know, and even those ones are not like great, great, great songs, besides Fixer, I think is a really awesome song, um, just definitely a, a letdown here, this is kind of, you know, if you've been following on, this is the, the first one for me that I'm like, uh, you know, just not good. Um, out of their discography, which I know most people would either 
that would either be the Black Album, you know, if you're real hardcore, you know, and or like nothing past justice is good at all, right? Then you'd probably be, you know, kind of shitting on the Black Album and then the rest of the stuff, right? Or a lot, where a lot of people would be like, okay, it's load where stuff went really downhill. For me, this right here is where I'm just like, you know, no, it just doesn't cut it for me. Not a good album. Reload. Um, whoa, almost dropped that. Wow. I <laughs> caught it though. Don't, even though I don't like the album, I don't like it. <laughs> I want to keep it for collection purposes, right? Don't want to shatter it. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, guys. So, I mean, I would, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this one, especially, I know, um, a lot of you guys down there were commenting like, oh, you actually like load as well. And, so I thought that was pretty cool to see some of you guys come out and um, who, other fans of that also be like, hey, man, I like that album, too. So it's cool to kind of, you know, share that uh, share that love for that album. But I want to see if you guys actually like this one because I'm not in that camp at all. Not a good album for me. Not one I like to revisit very often. And I'm just reminded why on this re-listen. So, but... Um, Next time, guys, we go to a huge uh, cover album, which, um, you know, I know some people don't count cover albums or whatever. I've always done it on on here before because I think it's interesting. And sometimes they can be better um, than actual studio releases for bands, which is kind of sad, but sometimes it's the way it goes. But we'll be looking at Garage Inc., which came out just a year after this one. So we got 96 with Load, 97 Reload, 98 with Garage Inc., which will be the last uh, Metallica offering from the 90s, with this whole same lineup, which will also be the last um, album with this lineup on it. So, and that that cover album spawned a lot of uh, a lot of hits for the for the guys. So it'll be fun looking back through that. That is a pretty lengthy one because I know it combines like Garage Days Revisited, that EP from the 80s, kind of tax it on. We'll just group it all in that one and call it Garage Inc. You know. Um, and just review that itself instead of doing the EP of that of Garage Days Revisited, and then that as well, which includes that. So we'll just we'll just cover Garage Days and have that all in one there, which which should be exciting. I'm excited to kind of hear some of these covers again. Um, so stay tuned for that, guys. And again, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this one because you know it's like black and white for me. I love Load. Do not like Reload. So I want to see if maybe I'm in the minority with that. Maybe, you know, you guys who loved Load love both of these. Or, may, and, you know, or maybe even you guys who didn't like Load actually like this one. So it's definitely um, an interesting album to kind of compare with Load. Compare and contrast those two. Because I felt like, while they had similar kind of themes um, to them, it's just this one totally missed the mark. But anyways, guys, yeah, um, let's let's talk about this thing down here. Stay tuned next time as we power along through this thing when we look at Garage Inc., um, the big cover album for these guys. So like, subscribe, comment, and thanks, guys.